Hello, hello, it's Lance Osborne, and it's time for more Beatles news here on the Fab Four Archivist channel. This is episode 18. Let's jump in. If you've been following any news besides the current health crisis, there's no way you missed this first story. Rock and roll pioneer Little Richard has passed away. The music legend died Saturday, May 9th, 2020, at the age of 87 at a family home in Tullahoma, Tennessee. Now, I hate for these Beatles news episodes to become necrologies, but I think it's crucial to discuss Beatles-related deaths when the person was really vital to the Beatles' music or their personalities, and Little Richard was certainly that. Paul McCartney's goodbye letter says all that needs to be said. From Tutti Frutti to Long Tall Sally to Good Golly Miss Molly to Lucille, Little Richard came screaming into my life when I was a teenager. I owe a lot of what I do to Little Richard and his style, and he knew it. He would say, I taught Paul everything he knows. I had to admit, he was right. Paul's tribute came alongside notes and quotes by Ringo and the estates of John Lennon and George Harrison. Ringo called Little Richard one of my all-time musical heroes. And Harrison's Instagram account shared words from his speech at the Beatles' induction to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And thank you all very much, especially all the, the rock and rollers, the little Richard there. If it wasn't, it's all his fault, really. John Lennon's estate shared a quote about the Beatles connecting with little Richard in Hamburg. He used to read from the Bible backstage, and just to hear him talk, we'd sit around and listen. It was Brian Epstein that brought him to Hamburg. I still love him, and he's one of the greatest. Beatles covers of little Richard tunes include Long Tall Sally, Hey, 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 and Tutti Frutti. The latter was a part of the band's set list in the early 60s, but no recording of it has circulated. But we did get a peek of it during the Get Back sessions. Now, speaking of the Get Back sessions, the 50th anniversary of the release of the album, Let It Be, was on May 8, 2020. After much speculation by me and many others, the date came and went with no news from Apple Corps about the projects that are in the works. These include the new Get Back documentary by Peter Jackson and a restored Let It Be film and possibly slash likely an album box set. Apple, the band's holding company, did acknowledge the anniversary, but only with a minuscule news release and a 26 second clip from the Let It Be music video. For more on the Let It Be projects slated for this year, check out previous episodes of Beatles News. I've linked to one in the card at the top of the screen now. Related to all this, I've previously mentioned here on Beatles News that the companion book for the Peter Jackson film, The Beatles Get Back, is available for pre-order. Now, an update on that. The release date has been bumped up from October 15th to September 1st. If you'd like to order it, there's a link down in the description. But for what it's worth, their pre-order price, here in the US anyway, has increased from about 35 bucks to about $50. The pandemic situation has obviously affected everything, and the Beatles universe is no exception. For example, Paul took part in the recent One World broadcast. And I would be surprised if the pandemic doesn't somehow affect the planned September release of the Get Back documentary. And now there's unfortunate news about Cirque du Soleil, who produces the Beatles love show in Las Vegas. The Montreal-based company has obviously been impacted by the global cancellation of shows, and now there have been reports that bankruptcy is being considered. The latest news, though, is that the Canadian government and investors are helping out, but Vegas news site VitalVegas.com reports that love may be in trouble. Cirque has numerous shows in Las Vegas, and scaling back after the crisis is likely. Now, I've always heard that attendance at love was stellar, and it was when I attended a few years ago, but that's just anecdotal. If you've seen Love recently, let me know down in the comments what the crowd was like. But as we all should know, attendance is just part of the financial equation. It's possible that with this show, due to licensing or revenue sharing, Love is simply less profitable for Cirque. I'll keep you updated as I learn more, but for now, if you get a chance to go see Love as things open back up, please go do it. It's really an incredible experience for anybody, but dare I say, it's a pilgrimage of sorts for diehard Beatles fans. Next up, in case you didn't catch it, the music video for Paul's Maybe I'm Amazed, a slideshow really, has been newly restored and posted to YouTube in 4K resolution. Its release was timed with the 50th anniversary of Paul's solo album, McCartney. Unlike Let It Be though, I don't think anybody expected this album to get the deluxe re-release treatment since we saw a solid reissue in June of 2011. Currently, the video has over half a million views. 
Next up, let's talk about the genius of George Harrison. There's a new essay out on Harrison written by Cameron Callback, who works at Abbey Road Studios. The piece seems to have flown under the radar a little bit, but it really is a good look at Harrison's musicianship and writing. It's a quick read and worth any Beatles fan's time. I've linked to it in the description. Nice work, Cameron. Now some news about a Paul and Ringo song. There aren't many songs where Ringo and Paul share co-writing credits, but here's your chance to hear one before virtually anybody else. On May 19th, Omega Auctions is selling a tape of the early 90s track Angel in Disguise that was mostly penned by McCartney with additional lyrics by Ringo. Angel in Disguise was a contender for Ringo's Time Takes Time LP and later Paul's album Flaming Pie, but it didn't make the cut either time. The tape being auctioned features two versions of the song, Paul's original demo and a more complete version by Ringo. If you want it, Omega estimates that it will cost you around 20,000 pounds. Hey guys, so I'm just now finishing up the edit on the video that you just now saw, and I just heard the news about Astrid Kirscher passing away. Uh, obviously, huge news here in the Beatles world. Very similar to Little Richard, Astrid was instrumental and very influential, especially in the early days of the Beatles, going back to Hamburg and Stu and all that fun stuff. Um, so we will celebrate her life and talk about her a little bit more in a future episode of Beatles News, but I wanted to go ahead and throw it out there that, yeah, I'm aware, um, these guys... They won't last forever, so it's important to uh, to kind of celebrate them when they leave, but also appreciate them while they're still here. So yet another reminder of that. That's it for Beatles news. So before you go, please hit the like button if you enjoy these updates. But I do want to close out with two little personal stories about Little Richard. First, a shout out to my first grade crush, Beth. I remember dancing and singing along to Tutti Frutti with you at your house out in the country not realizing that the song was an oldie even then circa 1988. For whatever reason, I don't have a lot of vivid childhood memories, but this one really stands out. Just a guess, but the song was probably popular then thanks to its appearance in 1987's The Brave Little Toaster. Lastly, I lived in Nashville, Tennessee for a time, and rumor had it that Little Richard himself lived on the top floor of the Hilton downtown. I spent a decent amount of time at the hotel for various work events, and I always hoped that I would catch him in the lobby. He was still in decent health at the time, so I was able to imagine myself meeting him and telling him thanks for his contribution to the soundtrack of my life. It never happened, but the next time I'm in downtown Nashville, instead of wondering if I'm gonna bump into a country music star, I know that I'll be thinking about Little Richard, Tutti Frutti, and of course, his impact on the Beatles. All right, thank you so much for watching. We'll see y'all next time.